Hey, happy weekend to you guys. We're going to dive into a little bit more of a project that we've talked about over the week, and that is Arweave. We'll break it down for you guys, giving you guys some, hopefully some insights to how Arweave might play into the Web3 future. It's going to be a good one. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. Make sure if you're out there on YouTube right now, maybe you're listening over on the podcast side of things, uh, come over to YouTube and hit a like button just on a couple of videos, and also subscribe. We always ask for you guys to help us out with that for our efforts of getting this stuff out to you. I do want to thank our sponsor today, and that is Kraken. If you're looking at doing some now NFT trading, you can actually do it over on Kraken. So just click the NFT tab, and within that, you'll get a chance to now trade NFTs with zero gas fees. We're seeing more and more exchanges really kind of go in this direction. This is one you can, of course, uh, check out. And of course, the thing with Kraken is very low fees, uh, great liquidity. Make sure and check them out if you're looking for an exchange to jump into for a trade. Maybe Kraken is the route for you. Make sure and use our link down below. It does help us. All right, so I want to get into a few things here. And when you think about Arweave, you have to look at Filecoin. Filecoin is kind of the OG in the space. And there's been kind of a, a comparison if you think about the old storage mechanisms that have been out there, you know, that's what Filecoin is, if you think about Web2. And then if you think about the future of next gen, which has mostly been cloud storage, then you would say, okay, the Arweave is kind of the Google Drive or the cloud storage of Web3, even though it's not Google, it's not a Google Drive, it's not cloud storage. But the point is, is that's the comparison between uh, Filecoin and Arweave. If you look at Filecoin, overall, and you kind of look at their storage uh, decentralization, China is really one of their biggest storage uh, centralized areas. Then you have the United States coming in number two, Korea and Hong Kong rounding up all with over a thousand uh, storage facilities. The other uh, capacity here is that storage has actually been dipping slightly. So just think about this, this is January 2023, all the way back here to September 2020. in terms of overall storage. So that's another factor. Is Filecoin just going the way of Flash and other technologies that were in the early stages of Web 2? Is that happening now with Web 3? A little bit about File Scout. Uh, This is, of course, a tool that gets into the mainnet and uh, gives you kind of an overview on what's happening overall. And if you kind of look at some of the charts down here, you can get a chance to kind of see and learn a little bit about Filecoin. And you'll, you'll notice a couple things right here in terms of their uh, gas used, also gas used for the 64 gigabyte sectors. These are just showing some potential downward trends. Don't know if this means that there's continuously uh, sloping down. If you go back and look at that previous chart right there where data is slowly sloping down. Uh, is that the case? And is Arweave maybe taking up some of that gas, so to speak, uh, as it starts to grow uh, over the network? Uh, also, a little bit more here on Filecoin. You can kind of see some capacity here. Uh, overall capacity and services declining a little bit. This is on the Max tab. Right there on market and deals, pretty much the same. Transaction usage, obviously part of this is bear market. But remember, this was uh, 2021 right here. This was when uh, Filecoin was really kind of running amok. And then you've got circulating supply also uh, minimizing as well. So, and there are some scenarios that play into Filecoin. If you look at Masari, there's a few things that Filecoin is and has been talking about around their partnerships, gaming, et cetera. You've got Gala in there using some, uh, some Filecoin. And then, of course, Audius, which I think Audius is actually using Arweave. So it may be a redundancy scenario where Audius is using Filecoin and uh, and Arweave. So that'll be interesting to see how, how companies like this start to either migrate or if they use these two platforms as a redundancy, because many people use AWS and then something like a Rackspace or something of that nature for redundancy with, with normal today's storage out there on the cloud. The other thing that you want to look at, of course, is uh, circulating supply. Max supply, of course, is unlimited there with Filecoin. That could be a little bit of a problem uh, overall versus Arweave. You've got some limitations uh, right here, of course. This is on the um, on the overall market cap. This is the other thing, too, with, uh, with 
Arweave is that, I mean, this is, maybe this is the time. I mean, you've got the bottom right here at basically 223.9 million in market cap. Look at where this was back here in November of 2021. Remember that, that was the metaverse high setting at almost 3 billion in a market cap. Can you imagine what that would look like if we see that kind of run here with Arweave? And the key is, is that there's a lot of uh, aspects in terms of projects that are going into Arweave. Meta is going there with Instagram. We're finding a lot of these Web3 companies starting to move like you, what you saw there with Audius, et cetera. All of those are starting to link into the future. And if you look at the drive capacity, this is and it isn't necessarily super cheap right now, but all this is going to continuously go down. Just like, for instance, if you were restoring 500 gigs of data, basically that's about 5,000 videos, 170,000 songs, um, 1.7 million office documents. I mean, that's a lot of data for most entities. That would cost you 1,100 bucks. And remember, the thing with Arweave, it's lifetime storage. So you're buying this. Uh, and you, it's forever, just like the scenario with their partnership with um, Unstoppable Domain, same kind of scenario. Your domain, your ENS, so to speak, is essentially stored there forever in perpetuity. So there's a, a benefit to that. And I think this is something that uh, will, as I said, will continue to go down in terms of price. And as we start to see more and more companies doing the storage, uh, especially in Web3 gaming videos, et cetera, possibly social media, uh, obviously the things that are happening with Meta and Instagram, all of that really could uh, play into this. And of course, here's Unstoppable. Just to show you, I mean, this is a, a pretty significant growth right here on Unstoppable Domains. All of these right here, there's the name service, this is the ETH name service, uh, Polygon names, transfers, wallet, coin, et cetera, NFT, 624,000 right now, and dot crypto, almost a million. So a continuous growth growing and of course all that definitely uh, moving over to our wave. Now does that mean that Weave is going to slow down? If you look at the track right here in terms of growth, in terms of storage, I mean look at back here, this is August 2021, right here was really when it began, 11.9 uh, TIBs, all the way where we are right now, 120, so essentially 10x on storage in a very, very short period of time. I think this is one of those those projects that just is in the right place at the right time. A couple of tweet threads here. Uh, greener future on Arweave. Uh, and I don't think this isn't necessarily like an ESG kind of scenario. What I think they're talking about here is that data storage in general uh, requires so much carbon pr footprint, making of hard drives, cloud storage, servers, server farms, all those kind of things. So if you have a project that is looking at basically a uh, lifetime storage capacity, and the ability to continue to scale, that I think starts to really uh, go against some of the scenarios that play out in kind of the green, less of a carbon footprint uh, equation for some of these projects. And that may end up being a big deal. They kind of talk about it here. Are we mining utilizes Spora? Uh, this is a kind of a, a new technology that again also benefits bandwidth and uh, space problems that typically happen on mining. So. Again, more, more benefits for that. A little bit here about dApps, you know, uh, all happening. The dApp store itself on Solana now using Arweave. This will be a huge part of this because think about, think about this, the amount of storage that Apple has for every application that runs in the Apple uh, App Store. That is the example of a dApp store that eventually will be uh, storing all of those kinds of scenarios uh, that play into Web3. That again gets back to a big benefit for Arweave. And I think as investors really kind of tie in to where Arweave is going, this is only going to point to the fact that you saw it, 3 billion. Could we see maybe a 2, 3, or 5x of that kind of market cap? And if so, you can imagine what that would end up doing in, in terms of a top. Just to go back, the top on Arweave right here, let's go back to the price on that. And pricing was right at, yeah, 82 bucks. So pretty significant compared to where it's trading right now, which is hovering around $13. It just clipped after a nice little run here recently. All right, last thing is um, really kind of this scenario where we're gonna continue to see more and more social networks. This is Domus. 
uh, which is the Jack Dorsey protocol that is kind of, think of it as the, um, you know, I, I signed up for Adamus. It's a little different. And I will, gr granted, I will say that it's going to take some time for that to obviously grow. But it's a lot like Mastodon, which is federated, you know, social media. There's no real centralized location. Uh, if you've never seen the Adamus, you know, app, it's a pretty straightforward uh, interface. This is kind of the, you know, just a quick look at it. But like this is Jeff Booth. This is a guy we've had on our show. There's Lynn Alden right there. You can kind of go over here and check out her profile. There are some interesting things here. You have a private key that's um, essentially integrated into Domus that is your kind of think of it as your Twitter profile. And that's how it works. But all this data being stored over here on Arweave. And again, I think that gets back into the Web3 and essentially what we may see in terms of decentralized social media. Big part of this, especially if the, if the use case starts to really uh, amplify. A couple of other things here. Um, you know, we talked about this er earlier, just a heads up. This was um, kind of the aspect of the ANS side of it. This is, compare this to say ENS. This is a, a cool tool. You can use this through Unstoppable. If you go in and mint your name, it's forever stored on Arwe for free. Uh, so you should be doing that. Uh, check it out. A couple of things you can do. Check your, uh, what they call the WL status. Just go to this address right here, which is sender.gg forward slash forms ANS, and you'll be able to get to that. Let me kind of zoom up on that in case you guys didn't catch that address. Um, but that's another uh, bit of, big deal. Now, if you look at Arweave, like most Web3, there is one problem, and that is always be, uh, I guess, always going to be one of the biggest issues right now at least until we get to scale, and that is Web3 onboarding. So here is a good example of just getting into the Arweave app. Uh, you've got to go in and develop a, fa a passphrase or a key file. Uh, you have a watch public address that has to be generated, and eventually this is going to get into Ledger, which will be great because it will eliminate a lot of the things that are a bit clunky around developing an Arweave address or a wallet. And I think this is one of the things that will have to uh, make um, immediate changes. So be watching. If our weave starts to build a wallet that is easier for onboarding and or integration with things like Ledger and others, then I think you're gonna see more adoption and more use cases, including companies, enterprises, and even non-crypto curious companies to say, because everybody needs storage. And I think once they start to look at this compared to what they're spending on hard drives, cloud storage, Google Drive, and then what you've got up here at maybe AWS, even we looked at it for potentially storing our own data from the CPI, our crypto power index. So anyway, are we definitely on a run right now? Uh, it's one that we're watching. We have it in our bag. Uh, we're gonna continue to hold this one as one of those tokens. Remember, I talked about this early in the year. There's a handful of tokens that I think are going to end up performing really well. We think this one is one of those candidates for performing in this next bull run. So watch it close. Make sure and do your own research. Of course, if you're over on the podcast, jump over here to the YouTube channel. Uh, this is where we kind of do a lot of these analysis and breakdowns of tokens and things of that nature. Again, are we didn't ask us to do this. We do this on our own research, our own dime. Uh, so it's our uh, complete opinion whether you guys like it, maybe you don't, maybe you're a Falcoy fan, don't know. Drop some comments down below, let us know. If you're not part of the Diamond Circle, get in because uh, we've got this new uh, Substack that really is kind of a cool tool because it now gives you guys the access to a lot more content than what we were able to do over on our uh, platform that runs the CPI. And all you have to do is go to pbn3.substack and you'll find us there or just click the link down below. Of course, if you guys wanna reach me, it's out there on Twitter, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.